Hey everyone, Disappointed Giant here. Welcome to my Dead Cell Shield Guide. The purpose of this video is to go over the basics of shield mechanics, to talk about blocking and parrying, and to give some insight into the various shield-based mutations. I've had this on my to-do list for quite a while now, and I'm glad I'm finally getting around to putting this out. Thank you to viewer Moises Batista for their comment so many months ago about this very topic. If you're still out there, this is for you. I'm timing the posting of this video to be synchronous with the release of my Shields tier list, which is a sibling video to this one. If you're already familiar with blocking, parrying, and shield mechanics, you may want to skim over this video, but I recommend checking out the tier list if you're interested in hearing my in-depth commentary about the various shields in the game. Shields are a unique type of item in Dead Cells because they can fit in a lot of different builds, even though they're built for survival. While the damage output and scaling of a shield are dependent on the number of on-color scrolls you have, the ability to block and parry are not. In addition, the effects of certain shields can be useful even if you take them off-color. A great example of this is the Rampart shield. No matter what your stat count is, what color your build is, or what loadout you have, you will always get 2 seconds of invincibility with a successful melee parry no matter what. You can take this with the survival build and use the invincibility to give some extra protection between the heavy swings of an oven axe, or you can take it off color with the tactics build and use the iframes to help protect you while you're positioning to get away from an enemy. Whether you have one survival stat or 40 survival stats, the invincibility effect of the rampart is the same. A shield's main purpose is to protect you from or to minimize damage, and there are two ways to do this. The first is to parry with the shield. You can parry by pressing the shield button right before an attack hits you. If you're successful, you won't take any damage and the attack or projectile will be reflected back on the enemy. The damage dealt by a parry is noted by the yellow critical number in the item's description. There will be a brief exclamation point that flashes on screen right before an enemy's attack, which you can use as a visual cue to learn the parry timings of all the baddies that will be attacking you. This setting can be modified in the accessibility menu to make the visual notification larger and easier to see. In the other direction, you can also turn this visual cue off. If your parry is successful, the cooldown immediately resets and you can parry right again. As an example, think of the Timekeeper's shuriken attack. She throws out a handful of ninja stars in rapid succession. If you parry the first one, you can continue to parry the rest of the projectiles as long as your timing is successful. If you miss a parry, there will be a brief cooldown of about a half of a second before you can attempt to parry again, so you can't just spam the button repeatedly to parry multiple attacks. In addition, not every attack can be parried with the shield, such as the bird slams or the sweeper's ground fire. With practice, some time, and a little pain, you'll learn the few attacks that are unparryable. The other way to use a shield is to block with it. You can do this just by holding the shield button and facing in the direction of the attack. If your block is successful, you'll block the attack and will do some damage to the enemy, but will also take some damage yourself. Generally, the damage reduction from blocking is 75%. Blocking is a niche mechanic that I rarely see other players use or use myself, but it does have its place, especially if you're just learning the game. The downside to blocking is that you'll reset your killstreak if you block an attack since you do take some damage while blocking. And of course, if you block an attack while cursed or while holding the curse sword, you will die. On a personal note, when I started writing this script, I wondered why I didn't just hold up a shield to block in moments of panic. Taking some damage is usually preferable to losing a run, right? I genuinely cannot remember a time when I purposely blocked an attack outside of recording footage for this video. That's not to say that you, or I, shouldn't block attacks though. In most situations, parrying is the way to go, but if you can't escape an attack and need a moment to gather yourself, it's totally okay to hold the shield up and tank some of the hit before regrouping and retaliating. This might be a big shift for folks who only parry, but it may be something worth keeping in your bag of tricks for moments when tanking some damage could save a run. There are a few other miscellaneous shield mechanics that are worth mentioning. The first is that if you have a shield in your kit, even if you're not actively using it, you'll have additional iframes for half a second after taking most hits. If anyone has played a shieldless tactics build before, you'll know how quickly you can lose a run by taking a few successive hits. Shields can circumvent this quick death a bit with the extra iframes. 
Another useful mechanic is that when you parry a melee attack of an enemy that has arrows stuck in them, the arrows will come back to you. If you're using a range build and are not running barb tips, it can be worth taking a shield into a boss fight specifically so you can parry them to get your arrows back and refill your quiver. And finally, parrying a festering zombie's egg attack will turn the egg into biters which will then attack on your behalf instead of turning into enemy worms. All of this information and more is listed on the shields page on the wiki which I'll link to in the description in case you want to read up and do a little more digging yourself. So let's talk about shield-based mutations, which all scale with survival. Blind Faith reduces cooldown with each parry and scales all the way up to 6 seconds of cooldown with 32 scrolls. I use this a lot in boss fights since most skills will have their cooldown reset after only a couple of parries. This works wonders in the Hand of the King and the 5BC boss fights. What Doesn't Kill Me grants healing after successfully parrying a melee attack and scales up to 6%, which is wild. This blueprint is a common drop from the worms in the toxic sewers. You can only get this healing once every 30 seconds per enemy. If you take this into boss fights, your healing will be limited because you're restricted to healing only once every 30 seconds. So I would recommend using this in biomes when you can parry several different enemies in a row and get a big chunk of your health back. Spite increases the flat damage of parries, so you'll get a higher damage output when using this mutation. You can find this mutation in the hidden passage in the transition area to the toxic sewers. Counterattack gives you a damage buff on your next melee attack after a successful parry. The buff lasts 8 seconds, so your next attack doesn't need to be immediate to benefit from the mutation. While I would argue that both Blind Faith and What Doesn't Kill Me are viable enough to be taken off color, I only recommend using Spite or Counter Attack while running Survival since their damage output is more noticeably dependent on stat scaling. And finally, we have what I consider to be one of the strongest mutations in the entire game. Armadillo Pack. This scales with Survival but can be taken off color as well. Like I mentioned earlier, parrying in most shield effects are not dependent on stats. With Armadillo Pack, you can put a shield in your backpack, and whenever you roll, you'll trigger a parry. You can use this to roll through enemy melee attacks and parry them. You can roll through projectiles to have them shot back at the enemy who fired them at you, and you can roll through bombs to reflect them back. If you're using a two-handed item, like a crossbow or the ferryman's lantern, this is your only option for implementing a shield into your build. Personally, I think this mutation is incredibly useful and really powerful across the board. I've gotten the best use out of it with things like ice shield, punishment, and the parry shield, but generally any shield will be useful with armadillo pack. This thing is so powerful that I'll often run double shields with it one in my second hand for manual parries, and one in the backpack for the Dillo. If your main takeaway from watching this video is that you have zero interest in either parrying or blocking, I still recommend playing around with this mutation since it's such a game changer. I love taking this through the sewers for the worms, or to the Hand of the King fight specifically to be able to reflect bombs back with it so easily. When the backpack was first implemented, I thought it was just a gimmick and a placeholder, but this mutation is what helped me start to come around. If you're on the fence with shields, hopefully it will do the same for you. Overall, I think learning how to use a shield can be really helpful, especially when you're running a survival build. While parry timings can be tricky, I think they're worth learning. You'll have an option for damage mitigation, and most importantly will be able to deepen your understanding and your skill set when playing Dead Cells. I'm an advocate for trying everything the game has to offer, and hopefully this video gave you some extra insight and encouragement to dig into a defensive playstyle if you haven't tried one yet. I'll put a link to my Shields tier list in the description in case you're interested in watching that and learning more about the different types of shields in the game. Please leave any questions or feedback in the comments below, and I hope to talk with you soon. As always, thank you for watching, and good luck out there.